Yesterday, I actually saw two films. I saw the film Action Jackson, which was about a black loose cannon cop trying to solve a murder case, and ten minutes didn't go by without me seeing titties or explosions. And on that same day, I decided to watch Triumph of the Will. I watched Triumph of the Will with all my dad, of course, so it was a different experience because I saw Action Jackson with my dad so I could riff on. But with this, there isn't a lot to riff on since it's an early, mid-1935 actually kind of propaganda piece used to showcase the Nazi party in a very fashionable sense and it does a very great job doing so. It's very innovative. I mean, the first two to three minutes or a minute or so, you actually get to see an airplane shot of the sky, a cloudy sky, right before you see the city of Nuremberg, I believe. But a lot of the things they showcase are really good propaganda pieces. I'm not just using propaganda as a uh, buzzword, since I'm not a liberal. You already know how fascist I can get. However, the first 45 minutes of the film, I'm going to be honest, I fucking hated it. And it's not because it was a lot more taxing on your attention span. I was able to get past the transition of Action Jackson to this shit. It, it has aged well as a film. But the reason I wasn't able to like it was because they had to showcase Adolf Hitler as a rock star in a way. Only when his appearances in the first half of the film it made it seem more like he was an alpha hunk. I mean, the kids were excited. They're, they were screaming. The women were visibly turned on. In fact, they had to do close-up cuts to the chicks being turned on so that we could get the picture that Hitler was alpha as fuck to these chicks. You get a little historical context at the beginning that this is essentially the start of the Third Reich after Germany's, I guess, constant stream of punishments by the other nations of Western Europe. But this is some interesting stuff. <clears throat> Sorry you had to see my chest. That probably wasn't very exciting. Towards the later half of the film, the speeches went from being mundane to interesting. But going back to the first half that I hated, they had to showcase the camps, the training camps for the little Aryan kids. And I like the fact that these kids are visibly extroverted or visibly excited. You get little cut shots of them awkwardly grinning and shit like that. That was that was a little funny, but I could get in the context, people would have made fun of that. Uh, they were wrestling, they were all figured, literally eating sausages that were put to them in a little bucket or something like that. They all got up and got their clothes on in the same sort of routine. And it was interesting to showcase how they united the kids, in a way. And as a New Yorker from a very introverted, soft, autistic New Yorker, that is, I think I'm a little too sheltered for that lifestyle. I know in eight I was in camp, or nine, and I didn't fucking like that shit. I ended up getting pissed. I told my mom to, like, take, send me away from my dad for the whole summer. And that became, like, the best summer ever because I wasn't in that shitty-ass camp for a whole week. I was there for a week and then I bounced. The only thing I liked about that place was the croissants. We got to see some speeches and the pattern of how the troops organized followed by a speech. Troops doing some marching band stuff 
followed by a speech. But the speeches didn't feature Hitler a lot, and when they did, they were so kind of dull. They didn't get into the meat and potatoes of the movement. And really, I didn't like how unpolitical they were. It was more rhetoric to get the masses hype. And that's what it should be, but that's not what's going to entertain me. To put it precisely, how they would try to make Hitler look like a rock star, picture this. The last day of November 2011, in Manhattan, New York, you got to see both Justin Bieber and Barack Obama appearing in Midtown New York to do their thing. I was, of course, in the city at the time because I lived here, but I was in Uptown New York slash North Bronx, and in North Bronx I was taking some drugs, and it was a ghost town. Everything around those areas, Midtown, it was flooded with people. It was crazy. The train schedule, if you wanted to go Uptown, it was traffic, there was a lot of delays. But if you wanted to go Downtown, man, it was the most boring ride ever. And that was my first marijuana high. I think I made a YouTube video giving the rules for how I'm going to essentially download your video and sort of upload it on my channel. The rules on why, how I would do that and what kind of videos I would accept and things of that nature. Both of them made the appearance, and I didn't give a fuck. But, if Adolf Hitler shows up in Nuremberg mid-1935, 1934, 1933, hype happens. It's legit. It's not just a lot of people are there, and it's an inconvenience to a lot of others. No, it, there is some heat. It's not just Obama and Bieber. This guy who had a significance in 1935 as a political figure that not even an Obama has, and not even a... And I'm gonna go out and say this. Not even a Vladimir Putin fucking has. Or a Prince fucking Harry. I mean, that nigga wants to be a fucking Kardashian with his weird marriage thing they thought was gonna get billions of views, but it only got, like, a couple million. Royal writing wasn't shit. And then here comes the second half of the film, my favorite half, which had more Hitler speeches and some fiery ones too. You get to see a lot more fire, and knowing how my attention span was skewed by Action Jackson, this was actually a treat for me. I actually did enjoy seeing a lot of fire. A lot of the explosions, a lot of the gunshots that were used for theatrical purposes and also to get the masses excited. I mean, you saw a little fire when, uh, in the beginning when it was night and they were lighting the place up and got to see some of the Nazi logos. They really loved the flags and the symbolism of the swastika. But as, as I was watching this film, this was the one that had nice Hitler speeches. One of the things I enjoyed that he said, one of them was that he said, We are not a product of the state. We create the state. That proves to me that National Socialism isn't fascism. So when I see people like Golden Dawn stabbing an anti-fascist rapper and they're a neo-Nazi movement, I understand the significance since what anti-fascist rapper really means is a strike against reaction, but they're not the same thing. Nazism saw the state as a means to an end for the nation, where fascism saw the state as an end of itself because it creates all these things. And that got me hyped because they got to see a little political rhetoric. 
He also did a speech with the little tykes that were drumming and shit like that. This is crude and inappropriate, and I was questioning whether I would include this in this video, but I thought one of them kids would be in his shit, but he was actually playing his drums after Hitler finished his speech. I know I would have, but that's why I would have probably been put in a concentration camp. Because I'm a dirty little freak. But he says like something awesome to these ten year olds that we're all gonna die. But this movement, if it succeeds, it's not gonna fucking die. And these kids were fucking hyped. They had some fire in them, these little Aryan fucks. They they were they were tearing shit up when he was saying that I was feeling that. They were all mobilized and shit like that. I love that. You, you get to see another Hitler speech after that, and it's good. But then you get a 20-minute build-up of all the troops and how they're stationed around this little city. And there's like a day and night change. It's 20 minutes uh, with a lot of music playing. The soundtrack to this movie, when the troops play their instruments, is very major chord. It almost sounds very Looney Tunes. There isn't a lot of dissonance in it, and... It fits its time very well. I enjoyed it. The 1930s is probably my favorite decade. I probably wouldn't live from there on, but I call myself a 30s kid, even though I was never part of it. Shit looked go good. Uh, I don't like the Great Depression or things of that nature, but shit looked good. <sighs> And then, when he finally makes his speech, his final speech to Climax, I was loving this. In fact, I was... Early on yesterday, when I was watching Action Jackson and shit like that, we saw a little documentary on the Ku Klux Klan, which was full of low IQ crow mags, essentially saying, we don't like niggers, we don't like uh, Jews, and we don't like sticks, and my dad got tight because of that, and his best friend, since we are watching it in his house. I'm think, and then when I was watching that build up to this one, I was feeling kind of shitty. I feel uncomfortable when there are stuff like the Klan, which has somewhat of a correct view on race. And they love the white people, they care about them, they care about the fact that a lot of institutions, industries, and just the whole framework of the system is out to destroy them in a way. I can relate to that. But then, they have to present themselves as such low-class, unintellectual people that I feel ashamed. I want to see stuff like this when we see people of our viewpoints. I want to see niggas that have class, and have intelligence, that showcase their viewpoints in a classy way. When Mr. Walker 7 presents his viewpoints in a classier way than you do, then there's a fucking problem. I don't want people to think, alright, maybe what pro-white people are inbred retards. I don't like that shit. That's disgusting. That, that grosses me the fuck out. It makes me ashamed of my viewpoints, because I'm trying to defend these guys, but I just feel like I'm in an uphill battle because I'm, the guys I'm defending aren't presenting themselves in a proper way. And the Ku Klux Klan, as in and of itself, is a very shitty institution, very pro-feminist, and there's no such thing as anti-Semitic feminism, really. Feminism is really Jewy. Emma Goldberg, Goldman, Goodman, I don't care. Very Jewy. You can be against any race as a feminist. There is such thing as racist feminism. Except for the Jews, really. I tried, looked it up. It's hard. It can't happen. You can be against the Jews' beta maleness, but not this. So his speech itself was. And we're hitting the 15 minute mark. This is my second video to do so. His speech itself was fire. It really was. It starts off 
boring as shit because he's talking about the fact that for so long the Germans were held back. I don't like this underdog Nazism thing that we will prevail. Well, they'll know us from now as having the greatest generation, then nowadays we see Hitler as some evil fucktwat. But then you start saying, okay, far none, our race is the shit, we are the shit, we are the best, and then each, from there on, it goes awesome. That's, that's when I think the real climax happens. And then the guy that made the opening speech, he also does the closing speech for like the first 15 or 20 minutes, and then these last two or three minutes, he closes it, and he's like, Guys, Germany is Hitler, Hitler is Germany, Germany is a party, the party is, I mean, Hitler is a party, and the party is Hitler. He's just like, wow, man, this is awesome. And everyone is, like, practically getting off their seats in excitement. That is what we should be seeing, in a way. That is what I want us to be seeing, but I don't want to see this, uh, low IQ perspective of, political reaction. I don't like the fact that it's Greece that's starting this uh, Golden Dawn movement. This nasty ass has been placed that it's really full of ugly people. I'm gonna be fucking honest. I, if you're a Greek person and I just said that, okay, I apologize. I am fucking sorry. Maybe there are better people. Maybe you are one of them, but this isn't what I... After seeing this, this isn't what I fucking want. This isn't what I fucking want. I almost feel like changing my style up a bit just because of this fucking uh, movie. I'm not... I, I didn't cry when I saw it, but it's just like, damn. I feel kind of like... angry about it in a way. And we saw a lot of Hitler movies growing up. In middle school, I just saw Hitler documentary after Hitler documentary after Hitler documentary or stuff set in that location of Germany, that swing shit, that the pianist. Just a lot of stuff like that. Sorry. And I honestly feel like that's why they didn't show this movie in its entirety. And they show little snippets, they might show it for a film class or something, or a piece on propaganda, but they don't show us to educate us on just what's going on, because you probably would be sympathetic. It's kind of like Downfall, where they humanize Hitler, and this one, they mythologize Hitler, and that's even worse. And that's, for the most part, a lot of what I have to say. I am a little disturbed by Anglo-American politics. There's a Facebook page on that. It's like the fact that any symbol of reaction, pseudo-reaction, I say, is full of degeneracy, that these neo-Nazis are punk rock listening I guess hot top wearing homos. That pisses me off. That they're sexual degenerates, that they're sluts, that they're fucking wiggers, that they're fucking nasty ass pieces of shit, that they're ugly inbred retards, that they're uh the untouchables, the antiages, the lower whites. The people that we would be tearing down if it wasn't for these outsiders coming in, that's what pisses me off. And I'm a Dominican nigga. What the fuck? So this is Mr. Monica 7. I hope you enjoyed my review. I recommend watching this film. It's only an hour and 44 minutes, but it feels like five hours. But just watch something slow. Just start watching slow movies. Movies that are paced, that they don't don't need nudity and uh, explosions every time, which is actually kind of 
a lot of other Hitler movies, a lot of other Jewy propaganda pieces. Actually, Jewy propaganda pieces. This is my longest video so far, and... Take care of yourself. This is Mr. Wonka 7. Suck my dick, and respect the king.